In today's project I'll modify an old electric TV stand to become a turntable to shoot some video. The TV stand was not designed to do a full 360 degree turn, so its inner gear only had a couple of teeth to get about 20 degrees on rotation. Now I'll use my phone to make a reference image and then fully model a new gear in Fusion 360. I'd like to show you how you can use reference images to make parts that fit into existing objects like this TV stand. After removing the old gear and inserting the new one, the box is able to make a full 360 degree turn. To show my appreciation for my Patreons, I also made some vlogs about the process of this project, so be sure to check that out. But now let's begin by taking it apart. Well, this box is basically just a large bearing with a couple of gears, a DC motor and some electronics. Lots of electronics. My initial idea was to reuse and reprogram the microcontroller if they had some sort of programmable logic in there. But it turned out that there's so much going on on those PCBs so that it doesn't make any sense to even bother reverse engineering some of that stuff. Also, they get their rotational feedback from a potentiometer which is attached to a gear. And that's not even capable of doing a full rotation. So, at the end of the day, I figured that I have to scrap all the electronics and come up with my own solution. First I removed the electronics and then reassembled the gearbox. Since the one gear attached to the potentiometer is now missing, I had to ensure that everything still operates fine. But lucky enough it was just to get rotational feedback and was not necessary for the thing to spin. So let's take a look at the outer housing. And that's actually the part that has an inner gear which gets turned around by the gearbox. As we've seen before, it's only partially covered with teeth, so in order to be able to get a full rotation, we need to design ourselves a new gear. First I thought about designing something that fits around those teeth, but then I figured it's better to remove everything and insert a fully closed and brand new inner gear. So how can we do that? There are many possible ways to design that new part. I could have measured the size and amount of those teeth in order to replicate them in Fusion 360. Another, more practical method is to use something called an attached canvas. That's where you can insert an image into your design and use it as a reference. In order to do that, I simply used my phone to make an image of the housing with the existing gear. To get the best results, you may want to use a tripod and get your camera as perpendicular as you can to the surface of your part. Also, you may want to use a lens with a long focal length in order to get rid of distortion and perspective. But I figured this is enough for the job of today. So I just took a quick measurement of the diameter and headed over to Fusion 360. In a new design, I started with an attached canvas on the bottom plane and selected my photo as the image. Now keep in mind that this photo does not include any dimensions yet. Fusion just inserted it at some random scale. To fix that, we need to calibrate the image. By right clicking on the recently created canvas in my browser and hitting calibrate, the photo turned to some bluish color. Now we can select two points on that image and type in the distance between them. Since we previously measured the inner diameter between two of those screw holes, I'll just eyeball those two calibration points between them. After typing in the diameter, Fusion knows exactly how to scale the image so it matches up in our 3D world. Next I'd like to center the part on my origin point. First I'll make the canvas a bit transparent and then create a new sketch on the bottom plane. As a centering guide, I'll hit C to draw a circle, which also has the diameter we've measured previously. Then I once again edited the canvas and moved the image until it lined up with that sketch. This looks good to me, so I'll proceed with drawing the teeth. So far we have an outer circle defining the outer width of the gear. I'll add another one, which will reference the inner width and therefore the height of the teeth. By pressing D, I'll give it a round value of 4.3 mm. Now I'll start with the rough shape of the teeth. By hitting L to activate the line tool, I just outlined one single tooth. We only need one, because we'll later use a circular pattern to copy them across the entire circle. I'll also add a center line, which will later be used to make it symmetrical. Next, I'll apply some symmetry constraints and dimensions to all lines. Again, I just positioned the lines according to the underlying image. As dimensions, I just rounded the values to something that makes sense. Now 
The only leftover constraint is that the tooth is actually not fixed in its position around the circle. But that is not a problem, because this one tooth will be the blueprint for the circular pattern. And the exact position of a single tooth is not important as long as they are all equally spread along a full circle. After roughly positioning this tooth, I stopped the sketch and started extruding the part. Then I enabled the sketch again in order to be able to cut out that one tooth. Before applying the circular pattern, I first like to add some fillets. Again, I just eyeball the correct feature size so it matches with the image. It seems like the inner and outer radiuses differ, so I chose to make two separate fillets. Then I selected the circular pattern, changed the pattern type to feature and selected my cutting extrusion as well as both fillets. I've estimated the quantity to 80, but we'll take care about that in a second. Now, depending on your machine, this can take some time to render. From looking up above, I adjusted the quantity until the instances lined up with the original teeth in my photo. 65 seems to be a good value, so I'll hit OK and let Fusion model out the part. So this looks pretty good so far. I sliced the part and sent it to my new Profab Mini 3D printer. I currently don't have a spool of nylon, so I'll just go with a good old PLA. The print actually turned out great, but unfortunately the box was not designed to go full 360 degrees. So I had to take care about that one motor mounting post. Also, since I decided to print a new gear instead of just the missing part, I also had to cut out the existing gear. After the glue was dry, I gave it a quick test, but unfortunately the motor post is still in the way of the inner gear. So I removed it entirely, while keeping my fingers crossed that the one remaining post is enough to hold that little DC motor. To quickly test it, I clamped it into a vise and connected my lap inch power supply. And this thing just works perfect. It's very quiet and also has a pretty decent torque. Though I have to clean the surface on which the balls roll, because it still is a bit bumpy. Also I'll make myself a couple of round cover plates, onto which I can put my objects that I'd like to fill. If you like my work and want to support me, I'd be more than happy to welcome you on my Patreon page. To show my appreciation I started vlogging about my projects and all the other things that are happening in my workshop. These vlogs are exclusively for my Patreons, so feel free to comment on all my vlogs and take action about upcoming projects on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.